Many textbooks claim that metamorphic minerals require millions of years to grow. But is this necessarily true? Did you know that the growth rate for some metamorphic minerals is thought to be very slow? Consider this statement from a well-known textbook on geology published very recently. When garnet crystals taken from a metamorphic rock collected in Vermont were analyzed, scientists calculated a growth rate of 1.4 millimeters per million years. Wow, 1.4 millimeters per million years. I mean, that's exceptionally slow. Uh, this would mean that a, uh, a 15 millimeter diameter garnet would take about 11 million years to grow. Yet, this paper published in 2012 suggests that garnets could actually have grown much, much faster. In this paper, scientists dated both the core and the rim of two large garnets with a diameter of about 15 millimeter. Let's take a look at their data. They said this, Combining acid cleansed garnet data from each garnet, multi-point garnet matrix isochron images, just radioisotope dating, of 46.5 plus or minus 0.8 million years for the core, and 46.46 plus or minus 0.59 million years for the rim were determined. Now, these data surprised the scientist because the ages of both the core and the rim are, geologically speaking, almost the same. Uh, this becomes most evident when you take the uncertainties into consideration. Notice that the ages of the core and the rim overlap. This suggests, therefore, that these garnets could have formed basically instantly. And this isn't my interpretation. The authors went on to say this. The difference in age between the core and the rim, multi-point isochron ages, is 0.04 million years. That's only 40,000 years though with larger uncertainty. Propagating the two sigma age errors provides a maximum duration of garnet growth of 1.03 million years. But notice this next statement. Instantaneous growth is also allowable within our uncertainties. Well, what does all of this mean? Well, it means that some metamorphic crystals could possibly have grown very rapidly. But more importantly, and this is the take home for this week's video, it means that students of science must be critically, critically able to evaluate uh, categorical statements that appear in textbooks and that are vocalized by professors who are teaching at the rudimentary level in high schools and at community colleges. In other words, dig deeper into the scientific literature. Well, that's all for me, Ken Colson here on Creation Unfolding. Please don't forget to check out my other resources. And of course, please don't forget to hit that like button to help out the Google algorithm. Uh, and of course, hit the subscribe button for quicker access to more videos like this sooner. Thank you and goodbye.